If you look at the current frequency of the CPU reported in the top left corner, you can see that those Zen 4 cores are running around 5.5 gigahertz with slight variations during gameplay. If you're watching this on the 23rd of May 2022, then today AMD has once again had the Computex keynote and CEO Dr. Lisa Su has said some things about the upcoming Zen 4 product line. What's your minimum specification? Well, shucks, the cloud is here, but which cloud do you trust? Manage your infrastructure with Linode, the biggest independent cloud services provider. Linode offers double the database performance per dollar than the big four, and now enhances it further with new NVMe-backed block storage. Spin up a game server, website, personal VPN, or something more bespoke today with a free $100 60-day credit at linode.com slash techdeppotato. So if you don't know what Computex is, it's a yearly trade show, usually held in Taiwan, but because of the pandemic, it's been caught kind of semi-virtual for the last couple of years. Uh, if we wanted to go to Taiwan to actually be there in person, there's at least a seven-day quarantine, yada, yada, yada. Gets all a bit frustrating. However, over the last few years, AMD's CEO, Dr. Lisa Su, has had the lead or one of the leading keynotes, and this year is no exception. This year, they're focusing on AMD going from strength to strength. We've seen record revenues. We've seen record uh, sales numbers, uh, record ASPs. And at a point where the PC market is expected to be declining, AMD is actually increasing its revenue share. So there were two big announcements today at Computex for AMD. Uh, the first one is pretty trivial. We'll go through it quite quickly. And then the second one is the one that you're probably all looking for. So first of all, the quick and easy announcement. Mendocino. So AMD on its mobile platform, we have AMD Ryzen Mobile 6000 and 5000. That's kind of taking the top spots um, all the way down to the mid-range and some of the low end. AMD is announcing Mendocino, which is a Zen 2 based APU, four cores, eight threads, but with RDNA 2 graphics. Today, we are announcing a new APU codenamed Mendocino that will launch in the second half of this year. Mendocino is ideal for do-it-all Windows 11 notebooks and Chromebooks between $399 and $599 US. Kind of sounds like the Steam Deck, right? That's Zen 2 plus RDNA 2 graphics as well. However, we're told that this is a different die. It probably has lower GPU uh, compute units. They haven't exactly told us how many. However, this is a product due for Q4, designed for laptops in the sort of three to six hundred dollar, three to seven hundred dollar um, pricing. That's three hundred to seven hundred, not three dollars. If you can find a laptop for three dollars, good on you. However, this is kind of filling up their low end product line. Exactly how many chips are going to come out? This may be as a response to just filling in some of the uh, some of the agreements that AMD has with some of the big OEMs and replacing the sort of Dali and Pollock-like processors, perhaps in the sort of super low end. Okay, that's Mendocino. Now on to AMD Zen 4. Now for the first time, let me show you our Ryzen 7000. As you can see, Ryzen 7000 CPUs include up to two core chiplets, each with eight Zen 4 cores, built on an optimized version of TSMC's high-performance 5 nanometer process technology. We've already seen AMD's Zen 4 processor being previewed. Um, it's kind of got this starfish weird design, which AMD has confirmed because the back side of the processor is now all pins. Normally, we'd have some sort of capacitors on there to help with power management. Capacitors have had to go on the top of the PCB that actually holds a silicon, and this is why we get this sort of eight octopus, I, I like to call it an octopus sort of heat spreader design. However, what's new, what we've found, uh, what AMD is presenting is a look behind underneath that die. And we've still got a two die chiplet with a one IO die configuration, kind of like the current generation Ryzen uh, processors, where each, uh, each of the core chiplet dies is expected to have eight cores and they're built on TSMC's five nanometer. And then it's a central I.O. die that actually gets a lot more interesting. So the central I.O. die built on TSMC's N6 or 6 nanometer process. It's probably got a few optimizations in there just for AMD. Uh, inside this, we have what we expected, controllers for DDR5, controllers that for PCIe 5. I was able to confirm from AMD that this chipset only supports DDR5. Anybody wanting a DDR4 version of uh, Zen 4, uh, it, this isn't it, basically. But also on board, they're going to have a small number 
of GPU compute units, RDNA 2 compute units in this IO die. This is interesting because it means that every version of this Ryzen Zen 4 package is going to have some sort of graphical output. We don't know how many compute units are on this IO die. It could be a small number like three. It could be something bigger, sort of seven or eight. We were told that AMD will still have an APU product line that will look different to this. Uh, but in order to ensure that these processors have some sort of graphical output in case somebody's waiting for a GPU or they just want to do some, um, they, they've got a problem with their GPU and they need to make sure that at least the CPU works, then they've got some form of GPU output. Uh, then this IO die will support up to four displays as well. Um, I can't imagine gaming across four displays on this. They said it's not really a gaming part, but the fact that they're now putting their processors, their Ryzen CPUs, in a position where they're effectively what AMD calls APUs or just CPUs with integrated graphics is a positive step forward. It does make it a bit more complicated with everything. However, AMD seems to think this is the right way to go. And because they're going down from a 12 nanometer to a 6 nanometer process, uh, if, they, if the die size is kept the same, then they can fill it up with stuff and compute units is a good way to go on that front. Alongside that, with the 6 nanometer, I'm really hoping that uh, one of the issues that we saw with Ryzen using a 12 nanometer I.O. die is that that power of the I.O. die, uh, the idle power especially, was quite high with the 12 nanometer I.O. die. With 6 nanometer, that should come down. AMD said that this is a new lower power architecture for their I.O. die. And if their Ryzen Mobile 6000 series is anything to go by, uh, that's got a lot of 6 nanometer enhanced power features in it. Uh, then hopefully we're looking at a super low power IO die, which means more power can go to the cores and higher performance. Really looking forward to testing that. Other features of this Zen 4 core is that we're going to one megabyte of L2 per core. This is doubling the amount of L2. So by a law of thumb, the, uh, the cache misses should be down by a square root of two, which is about 40%, 42%. Uh, they haven't said whether the latency of the L2 is increased. Usually when you go to a bigger size of cache, the latency does increase. Uh, we've seen before that AMD's gone to great lengths to where they've doubled the L2 cache to only minima to minimize latency to only another cycle. So it'd be interesting to see if that stays in that sort of 11 to 13 cycle uh, window. Over and above that, we're expecting, or AMD said that we should have a 15% single threaded performance boost uh, so some of that will be cache, some of that will be optimization doing in 5 nanometer, where you can have uh, shorter wire lengths and hopefully lower wire delay. Um, that being said, smaller architecture tends to lead to higher wire resistance, which leads to a higher wire delay. So it'll be interesting to see how that's uh, configured out. Zen 4 is a minor iteration on Zen 3, so on top of the cache we may see some different configuration of execution ports uh, on the back end. The AMD has said that they'll go more into more detail later in the year when this chip comes uh, in the autumn or the fall. So we're expecting kind of a Q3, Q4. I'm expecting maybe a sort of September, October timeframe for this. And on top of that all, we have a uh, 5 gigahertz plus boost. That's probably going to be on the highest end Ryzen 9s. And then AMD is also including support for AI accelerator instructions. They haven't said exactly which instructions yet though they have said that we have already seen these in the market. So I'm expecting something akin to Intel's uh, VNNI uh, Int8 instructions. They would probably go very well here. Now, also on this, AMD is saying that the CPU is supported up to 170 watts. Now, this has been reported before, but I was intrigued. So I asked AMD, is this the TDP? Is this the thermal design point of the processor going from 125 watts to 170 watts? Or is this the package power tracking power, which for Ryzen 9 was 142 watts? That's the max, uh, max power of the socket, 142 watts. Is, is that what's improving to 170 watts? And AMD's Robert Hallett confirmed this isn't the TDP that's increasing. It's the PPT that's increasing. So these CPUs may still have 125 watts listed, but the PPT with the right motherboard is going up to 170 watts. That I think is important, and that is probably one of the most misreported elements of uh, all these Zen 4 leaks that we've seen so far.
Another factor is that the socket, even though it's a new 1718 pin, um, that's 1718 pins, AM5 socket, it uses the same dimensions for the mounting holes for the coolers, so all your AM4 coolers will still work on AM5. This presumably means that there's no Z height difference either. On top of that, AMD also gave us an insight into the chipsets. We're going to have, uh, they announced at least three. We've got X670E for Extreme. That's focused on the overclockers and has PCIe 5 everywhere. Uh, we have X670 with no E. This is designed to be fully featured with PCIe 5 on the graphics and the storage. And then we're going to have B650, which is PCIe 5 on the storage, but PCIe 4 on the GPU. And that's aimed more at sort of the mid-range price market. There have been reports that the uh, this is going to be a dual chipset design. AMD didn't confirm any of that. We did ask for more specifics on the chipsets. They said that information will be to follow. Uh, AMD also said that some of the presentation that Lisa Sue will give today hasn't been briefed to us, so it'll be interesting to see if that comes part of the mix. I fully expect some of the information that Lisa's going to give on stage is going to be live demos and some more performance numbers comparing Zen 3 to Zen 4 or Old Lake to Zen 4. That's going to be really interesting. For the full I.O. of the CPU at least, we get 24 lanes of PCIe 5. Again, they're only used if you have the uh, X-series chipsets. We also have 14 ports of USB. Some of these will be 20 gigabit per second uh, super speed USB 3.1 Gen 2x2. There will also be Wi-Fi 6E support when you have an added um, controller card. This is probably going to be a MediaTek uh, RZ608 variant, but branded AMD. AMD also just announced that they're collaborating with Qualcomm on their FastConnect 6900 series, uh, which may include the Wi-Fi in that as well. And as stated, there'll be four display ports, two HDMI 2.1 and two Display Point 2. As you might expect, most of the major motherboard manufacturers are getting in on the game. Uh, AMD stated that the major five, you know, the major four plus Biostar are all going to be involved uh, with their AM5 motherboards. We've already seen leaks and given Computex is this week, we'll probably see a lot more information on when those motherboards come out. I, what I'm interested to see here is the pricing, because one of the issues with some of the older Lake LGA 1200 motherboards with PCIe 5 is that they were really expensive. We're at a point where what used to be the high-end motherboard, which was $170 with the Crosshair Extremes back in the day, $170 doesn't even get you the lowest-end motherboard for the best chipset these days so exactly how that's going to play out because pcie 5 does have an added cost it's a a much faster connection and therefore you have to build to that we're gonna exactly see where these motherboards play out i'm worried that over time we're going to get to a point where motherboards cost more than the chips um let's not hope that let's hope that that doesn't happen but either way with the major motherboard manufacturers on site, I'm expecting to see 20, 30, 40, 50 motherboards. Because we only have DDR5 and not DDR5 plus DDR4, uh, there'll like, hopefully be fewer motherboards than the LGA1200 series for Intel 12th gen. Um, but we'll see uh, it, whether these companies will actually showcase their full product stack at Computex. They usually at least show half. It depends how how far along they are though you can imagine that most motherboard manufacturers if you've got a favorite motherboard whether that's a tai chi whether it's an rog whether it's a gaming whether it's an aurus they'll probably have the one that you want updated for the new chipset for the new socket for the new cpu five hours later so i've just watched the keynote and the one bit of information that amd didn't tell us about in the briefing is the peak frequency amd showed a a, a game playing with the frequency of the CPU in the top left hand corner it started at 5.2 gigahertz went up to 5.3 and then 5.5 now one of my favorite things to do is show off our new tech so I'm so excited to be able to do that now with Ryzen 7000 let's start first with gaming what you're seeing now is gameplay footage of the recently released Ghostwire Tokyo from Tango Gameworks and Bethesda Studios running on a pre-production version of our 16-core Ryzen 7000 processor. This first-person action-adventure game has rich visuals that help recreate an alternate version of Tokyo. If you look at the current frequency of the CPU reported in the top left corner, you can see that those Zen 4 cores are running around 5.5 gigahertz with slight variations during gameplay. We designed Zen 4 to run significantly faster than our previous generation, and that increase in frequency can translate into a smoother gaming experience. And while this is just one example, 
We're really excited for gamers to get their hands on our Ryzen 7000 series. So AMD was initially saying going up to uh, 5 gigahertz plus. We're now seeing a 5.5 gigahertz, at least single thread frequency on this chip. This puts the 15% performance number on single threaded in a different light because if the frequency of the chip is going from 5 to 5.5 gigahertz, that's 10% performance just in frequency, then increasing the cache and everything else must be the other 5%, surely? So, as I said, I wasn't expecting uh, Zen 3 to Zen 4 be a bump. However, if the performance is 15% up and it's performance, not IPC, then... Yeah, what what we're more than likely getting here is the benefit of moving to the smaller process node, having better voltage frequency curves to bump and the power, the increase in the uh, in the package power tracking, uh, which incidentally during the presentation they said was TDP, so we really need to get a confirm on that. Uh, moving from 142 watts to 170 watts, uh, lifts it up so you can get more frequency, and then cache gets you the rest. So. Hmm. It's going to be interesting where this lays out, especially with Raptor Lake end of the year, which, uh, you know, more efficiency cores we expect and maybe some tweaks on the performance cores there. Uh, one demo that AMD did show was uh, the 12900K versus uh, the new 16 core Ryzen 7000 based on Zen 4 and a 31% difference in a Blender workload. That's uh, 16 performance cores versus 8 performance cores and 8 efficiency cores. And as mentioned, coming in the fall or autumn, Q3, end of Q3, beginning of Q4, I'm really expecting that sort of late August, September, early October time frame for this. That kind of feels about right. And then beyond that, Enterprise coming later in the year um, with Genoa and then Bergamo in Q1. Zen 4 is going to be an all-encapsulating core. It's... Uh, Really looking forward to seeing how it performs, especially with TSMC 5 nanometer. My minimum specification here is we need more specifications. The minimum specification is every specification. Come on, AMD, you know you want to. Robert, I know you're listening. If you like this content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. We also have now a private Discord server. And if you want access to that, become a Patreon member and it'll instantly add you as long as your emails are linked. You can join the Patreon for as little as $1.50 a month, and it all goes back into helping the channel. Thank you for your support.